everyone, how are you this evening? It's been a few days since we've had our Scottish Show Producer Showcase and I thought I would pop on because there's a couple of things I want to talk to you all about. So, hello! Oh, strangely enough, there you are Rebecca! So, <laughs> yeah, we'll just we'll wait a wee moment or two, see who else um, kind of comes on. There's a, a few things that I'm wanting to kind of chat about. And I probably should have switched the TV off. It just shows you how scrambled my head is at the minute. I've got a lovely sort of like fireplace ambient thing going on at, at the minute, just trying to chill out. So yeah, if you're new here and there has been a surge in new followers, as there always is at the, whenever we've just had an event or whatever, my name is Eva. I'm the director of the Scottish Arm Festival, the Scottish Wool Producer Showcase, and I am the founder of our very own Scottish Provenance Wool brand as well. So give me two seconds because of course I've left my tissue over there and it's now like allergy season two. Really, really not prepared for this this evening. So, yeah, so first up, um, yeah, I am still winding up the admin and it, it always kind of amuses me to a point when people reach out to me after the after an event and immediately expect a response and it's like, now you've had a rest, it's like it's not even been a day and it generally takes between five and seven to, to wrap up an event. Um, yeah, I've not had a break yet. <laughs> Sorry, that's a lie. I took time to go and soak in a bath two nights ago <laughs> instead of just normally having a shower. That that was delightful. Um, I am still, I think we're at the tail end now. We've, after an event finishes, you're trying to keep on top of all the social media. You've got a slew of new emails have come in. We've got remote vendors for this event, so we've got to do their inventory and package everything up and get it either to the post office or get couriers organised to pick their stuff up. We've got invoices to pay. We've got our own inventory of our own yarn to do. Yeah, there's a lot. There's got to go to the bank <laughs> if there's been any cash, you know, things like that. There's there's a, a lot going on. There's there's the thank you posts that need to go out, um, follow up press releases. So, so much goes on. Um, yeah, so I am still in the aftermath of all that just now, although we're, we're almost getting to the end. Um, so... I think the first thing I want to kind of talk about today is just about I need to reassert some boundaries um, for myself and for other people um, when it comes to the event. So the first thing I suppose is, is in terms of me, that when it comes up to an event, I am all things to all people. And because I've been working a lot with uh, people in the US recently, in the time differences, I've been back and forth on emails and social media and while I'm doing that, you know, I might as well just answer all the other emails that are there. And I can't continue to do that. Certainly during the, the showcase, security were telling me, and security don't know nothing, they're hired for our event. Um, they, they were feeding back um, questions that people have been asking them, people have been asking their volunteers, people have been asking me during the festival about the next showcase, where's that going to be, when are the tickets going on sale for the main the main festival, what's happening with the transport and I'm, I'm going to be honest those are not the times for those things and you know I, I am close to burnout right now, I need a bit of a break, we've had some huge things going on, some big changes and if I don't look after myself and just take a few days off at least and start sticking to like proper business hours, I am going to burn out and I really need the community to get behind me and understand that I am going to start doing um, more sort of business hours or flexible working around myself once I've had the chance to have a few days just for me. And on that, and I really don't want to kind of bring this in a downer, we need to talk about boundaries please, if you've got any questions at any time, come through the social media for the business, okay? 
so that, whether that's a Facebook messenger and I will pick up your message or sometimes some of our volunteers jump in at certain times and it's really busy or if I've got personal things going on because I too have like a personal life and family life and other things just like all of you have to manage around as well. So we've got our social media channels, we've got our newsletter, we've got our website, um, we've got our email, we've got all these things. Okay, and when I get the first opportunity to respond to you or one of our volunteers has the first opportunity to respond to you, we will. I'm really quite saddened that once again I am feeling that I need to say that it's not okay to contact our vendors if we say that there are no tickets available, that there's no tickets on our website, that there's no tickets available on, you know, on the door because of fire regulations. Um, I have heard from one vendor in particular this year that she had several emails asked from people asking well, how could they now get tickets and she even had phone calls to her mobile phone which is attached to her business asking I'm sorry that's not appropriate no one else can magic tickets for you please don't do that to my vendors who also have a lot going on in the run up to an event and managing other things too and also once again I am finding that I am having to say it's not appropriate to find me through my own personal social media to ask me to make special allowances for you either. So this is coming about, <laughs> I have to do it at every event and it is a minority. But we did manage to get some more tickets available for the showcase because there was a curling event happening and they confirmed a couple of days before that they would not have as many competitors taking part. We were given that information during load in. Now, during load in, I'm looking after vendors, moving their stuff in, getting set up and looking after the space for our remote vendors and our yarn as well. I am extremely busy at that time. OK, and really, normally we've got our tickets, any remaining tickets pulled at that point. Now, this was a sellout event. We found out that there were more tickets available. I did a live on Instagram and I said that this is a situation when I get home after loading which would probably be a good couple of hours after posting that live to keep an eye so my specific instructions were to please keep an eye on social media and our newsletter and when tickets are available you'd be told they were available. I came home not even had the chance to put the kettle on, not a chance to think about food. And my priority was to get those tickets live because we were aware that more people wanted them. To people not prepared to wait, who had gone and found my, my own personal social media accounts to message them to ask how they could get tickets. I'm sorry, in the future, I will no longer be responding to those messages. And I feel bad for saying it, but I shouldn't have to say it. If you need us, for our business, please come through our business. Because there have to be boundaries and I have to, to draw a line and I'm trying to balance all the things here and you, you, you don't, you should never ever go to somebody direct, especially when you do not know them. <laughs> These are people who do not know me, I do not know them, thinking that they can queue jump if they can find me on social media. It's, it's not, Okay, people, didn't want to start the live like this, but I kind of feel that I have to. Okay, let's move on to happier things. So what I'm wearing today, um, I am wearing this lovely Irene slipover, which is a sample made for me by the designer herself, Rebecca, who is Journey Through Yarn. Now, this is knit in our very own, <laughs> I'm saying our like it's Rebecca's and mine, it's not, it's Rebecca's design. And I think, and she'll correct me, but I think this is in testing at the minute and it's the Irene sweater has just recently been released. Um, yeah, Rebecca very kindly agreed to knit one for me <laughs> in our yarn uh, because I simply just didn't have the time on top of everything else to sample knit. So I do like to sample knit, but this was also going to be a test knit and I just, I knew that I wouldn't have the brain space to be able to do that. <laughs> at that time and figure that out as well. So Rebecca, very, very kindly 
okay, end of April for the Irene slipover release. So she very, very kindly agreed to make me a sample and to make it my size in our cocoon colourway. Now, all of our own yarn is now back up on our website. We just kind of did it quietly without a huge fanfare and put a little kind of Instagram story up to kind of say it's there. We don't have any cocoon in stock right now. I had two very large wholesale orders just before just before the showcase and I have been cleared out of a lot of stock. But equally, I, I think this would look gorgeous in our Bruce. It would look gorgeous in Fraser, which is that kind of salmony pink. Uh, Innes, if you wanted something a bit more neutral, although tea is now in stock, back in stock. But I would say that this tea is probably just a smidge darker than what we've had before and that's just due to um, Tate being at one of our natural blends and you, it's incredibly difficult to kind of colour match those there's always going to be a little bit of variance based on the exact colours of the sheep's wool because you're never going to get two fleece exactly the same colour so that is to say we've got this so Rebecca very kindly did a sample knit one for me so we have it look, let me look at the tip stitch details they are gorgeous and as a thank you I gave Rebecca enough yarn to make herself one so there's a lovely photo it's a lovely photo of her <laughs> I just look exhausted which is kind of part of the course during an event but there is a lovely photo of the pair of us together twinning in our ours Irene slipovers and Rebecca did hers in the original tea which is is fabulous so I wanted to put this on to do the Instagram live tonight so that you kind of you can kind of see it got my high-waisted jeans on there you go trying to kind of get it all in but the phone is slightly tilted so it's going to be kind of out of proportion on it so yeah those are I suppose those are the first two things that I wanted to kind of talk to you about so sort of time man time management and boundaries and how I'm going to manage those going forward because I do need to manage my health and my family life and, and things and I wanted to show the, the Irene slipover it's gorgeous go and check out go and check out the the sweater version which is on Ravelry and Payhip just now and then head over to our website if you you fancy making it I should say that although the yarn is up, I, I just pressed pause on the shop. So you can go and buy it, but I'm not doing another postal run um, after, I think I put five o'clock today um, until 2nd of April. I, I just I just need a few days because I haven't stopped yet. <laughs> and I know, you know, the irony of kind of coming on saying, look, I'm, I'm really going to have to to look at setting proper working hours and boundaries and things and then doing alive tonight but this is literally the only chance that I have of, of doing this live and I felt that the slip over really really did deserve it. So that's going on. Um, the other thing I suppose I need to let you know about just now is that vendor applications are about to come to a close. So those are the vendor applications for the Scottish Yarn Festival which will take place Again, it's the 7th of September. It's one day this year. We are not diluting the event at all. We're just condensing the marketplace into one day. And we have now bid a fond farewell to Dura Centre. Um, we, we are unable to hold any more events there. Um, at present, you know, ne never say never, but we are still waiting to hear that decision on what the future of the Jewish Centre is. So once again, because there, there were people who felt that they needed to come up to me during the showcase to tell me um, how they felt about that decision and said that they understood the reason for it. But I, I think, again, we're missing the fact that this wasn't a choice. We don't know what the future of the Jewish Centre is. There are proposed closures. There's a, a lot of things kind of hanging over at the minute. We can't get insurance to insure an event there. We can't get insurance. We can't go ahead. And it's it's just too close. I mean, a lot of events are, are organised with, with our main festival. We're normally planning 18 months in advance. So this is what we're doing, people. There literally is nowhere else we can go. 
there will always be compromises and no event or location will ever be perfect. But again, I really need the community to kind of get behind me on this one and just give me the grace to just breathe. And then when I'm ready to communicate further information out with you, I will do that. I have always done that and always been open and transparent and that is going to continue. But asking me directly isn't going to make that happen any quicker. You know, please just allow me a little bit of time right now because I am exhausted. And I know that if I don't take a break, I mean, I, I have ME <laughs> as well, you know, it's not going to go any better. So I know my boundaries. I know my health. I need to be there for my loved ones, you know, and now that the showcase is delivered, the vendor applications for the showcase are closing at 12 p.m. on this coming Sunday. And then, you know, the focus is on getting those because we've had to delay the applications going out this year. They're normally well closed by this point and everyone knows whether they're, they're going to be part of the event or not. So I'm already having to juggle things and it's like project management and I've been doing this a long time now. You know, this is our ninth Scottish Arm Festival. I've got three Scottish Show Producer Showcase events under my belt. I have a couple of Knit Faster Winter's Coming events, plus all the stuff that I've done as a musician, <laughs> organising gigs and tours and rehearsals and all that stuff. I was going to say jazz, but I'm really not a big jazzer. Uh, you know, this is not my first rodeo. So, yeah, I'm, I'm just having to say, look, please love your enthusiasm. Keep watching when I'm ready, as soon as I'm confident and letting you know what we're doing. That's what we're going to do, because as well, I don't want to give you information that's then potentially going to change and then folk are going to get confused anyway. So please just continue to trust me and get behind me and we will get through this. But I, I do. I just need... I just need at least a few days just to just to decompress. OK, I think that's everything I want to talk about tonight. I know I've kind of rambled on a wee bit and I started off on quite a, a low note. Um, if you want to come and join us as a vendor and you haven't already contacted me for your vendor application pack, then what you need to do is email vendors at the Scottish Yarn Festival dot com and request yours. They're not available to download online as they have been in the last couple of years. I want to see who's asking for them um, because that there are changes in things. Um, there's various sort of things that I want to assess in the background that is intentional. I don't know if it'll be like that in future years and um, that will do that. But I, I would like to, you know, I'm keeping a note of who is asking for our application pack and who's returning it, which I, I can't see how many times it's downloaded if I just place that on on down online or in fact you don't even need to download it you could just go and read it if you so chose to so I, I want to be a little bit more controlled over that information this year and, and monitor and assess and evaluate and all those things that you do when you're a small business owner <laughs> because when you work in the creative industries very little of it tends to be creative um, so that's that's kind of where we are <laughs> with that at the moment um yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's not so much a kind of like a two-way chat this one, um, or something that that's here for for questions. I just I wanted to come on and I wanted to explain a little bit more about what's going on in the background that I haven't had a break yet. <laughs> that you rarely you rarely get a break before a week is up after after staging an event, and you know time time frames have shifted this year, which makes. You know, I wouldn't say this is more challenging. It's just going to be very different organising certain aspects this year. And I know this, I always say it's a marathon and not a sprint. And I do, I need to look after myself so that I can look after everyone else. And I'm just asking you for the, the grace to do that. And and again, just a, a little reminder, but you know, it's sometimes I, and I understand because I, I think when you go online, or you watch a podcast, 
which I suppose Eva are also online and all these things, the word that we hear all the time is community, 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 community. And I think we sometimes forget that the, the community is made up of individuals who are all have very different life experiences and there are businesses that also operate within those communities and such and just just boundaries please do not contact somebody through their personal social media for something related to a business i would hope you wouldn't do that to anyone else of the business and it's that it's the same here please do not contact my vendors <laughs> in relation to my business the festival team should be your point of contact that's what we're here for and we will pick it up as soon as we can but coming th through personal social media is not cool <laughs> it really isn't um so yeah coming up i've got some samples to be knitting because i've got other news coming so there's always other news there's there's always so many things that you're kind of juggling in the background really looking forward to kind of sharing some of that with you um i'm hoping to get a little bit of travel done soon just sort of day trips out to, to catch up with um people that i care about um i really want to go and see the the warhol textiles exhibition at the the dove cut and through in edinburgh so i've got something cast on ready for train journeys for that been wanting to go since they announced it and yeah I'm not going to get any chance throughout the, the whole of May and probably the whole of June either so I, I either go now <laughs> very soon or I don't go at all and I would that'll be gutted to miss that one so I do have a few things to look forward to um, but yeah I uh, just just keep your eye on your social media on our social media sign up for our newsletter if you haven't already and i will be back on uh, having another sort of live chat with you soon because I, I do like that so it's a bit weird because i don't do the podcasting anymore it's kind of like one step removed and i do upload this to, to youtube as well so yeah thank you for your understanding for your patience for your support for your grace um, and everything and yes vendors <laughs> probably the most important bit of this at all <laughs> vendors if you want to be part of the ninth scottish yarn festival which is taking place at Errol showgrounds in perthshire on the 7th of september you need to contact us and get your application form now <laughs> because it must be returned by 12 p.m this sunday I am going to wrap this up here. I am going to save it to the grid as soon as I get a moment and all the other places and I will speak to you soon. Bye bye.